Today we're diving into one of the coolest and wettest topics, how water bodies like rivers, lakes, and oceans change over time. We'll look at some natural processes and human activities that shape and reshape these water systems. Let's jump right in, grab your life jacket. First off, let's talk about changes in rainfall. Rain is a big deal when it comes to water bodies. If an area gets more rain than usual, rivers can flood, lakes can expand, and in some cases, new lakes can form. But if there's less rain, hello drought, rivers can dry up and lakes can shrink. It's like nature's water faucet. Turn it up and boom, more water. Turn it down and everything gets drier. Rainfall is a big reason why deserts have dry riverbeds and why rainforests are, well, soaking wet. Now let's get a little chilly and talk about melting glaciers. Glaciers are like giant ice cubes on land and when they melt, they release tons of water into rivers and lakes. This extra water can raise water levels and even create new lakes. But with climate change making glaciers melt faster than ever, this has a huge impact on sea levels too. More on that in a minute. For example, the Great Lakes were formed by glaciers during the last ice age. So, glaciers might be slow moving, but they're super powerful. Speaking of power, let's talk about erosion. Erosion is like nature's way of reshaping things. Water flowing through rivers slowly wears away the rocks and soil, carving out valleys, canyons, and riverbanks over time. Think of the Grand Canyon. It was basically made by a river and millions of years of erosion. So, water is like nature's sculptor, slowly changing the landscape, one rock at a time. Now, here's where things get serious. Rising sea levels. This is happening because of climate change. Remember those melting glaciers we just talked about? Well, all that extra water has to go somewhere, and it's raising the level of oceans. Rising sea levels can cause big problems, like flooding coastal cities and wiping out beaches. Some islands might even disappear underwater. So yeah, melting ice isn't just a local issue, it's a global one. All right, enough about nature, let's see how humans are changing water systems. One major way is by constructing dams. Dams are built to control the flow of rivers, create reservoirs, and generate electricity. Sounds pretty handy, right? But they also have a big impact on the environment. Dams can block the natural flow of rivers, mess with fish migration, and sometimes even cause the area behind the dam to flood. So while dams give us clean energy and water control, they come with some serious side effects. Another human activity is irrigation. This is when we take water from rivers or lakes and use it to water crops. Without irrigation, a lot of farms in dry areas wouldn't survive. But here's the catch. If we take too much water from rivers and lakes for irrigation, they can shrink or even dry up. Take the Colorado River. It's so heavily used for irrigation that it sometimes doesn't even reach the ocean anymore. Irrigation helps us grow food, but we have to be careful not to drain our water sources. And here's a big one, bottling water from aquifers. Aquifers are underground reservoirs of water, and we can rely on them for drinking water in many parts of the world. But bottling companies and overuse can drain these aquifers faster than they can refill. If we suck them dry, it can lead to water shortages, sinkholes, and a lot of environmental damage. So what's the big picture? Natural processes like changes in rainfall, glacier melting, and erosion are constantly reshaping water systems, while human activities like building dams, irrigating crops, and bottling water are adding to the mix. Some of these changes are natural, but a lot of them, especially climate change and overuse, are things we can do something about. That's it for today's geography lesson. Next time you see a river, lake, or even a bottle of water, think about all the forces at play, shaping and changing the water we rely on every day.